Hey guys, it's Brian and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about trials. In other words, bad times or when things don't go your way or when everything in your life, even though you're a Christian, seems to be going wrong. And by the end of this video, you will understand why trials are normal and they happen for every Christian and how to respond to them in a Christ-like way. The verse we have today is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. It says, Beloved, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Huh, how strange. Don't be surprised when a fiery trial comes upon you to test you. Why are you surprised, Peter is asking. Why are you surprised as though something strange was happening to you? Why are you shocked that being a Christian is difficult sometimes? Why are you confused when you need to face trials in your life and you just can't run away. Why are you confused? Some of you that are watching this right now as you hear me speak, you may already know this, right? You really may already know that being a Christian doesn't necessarily mean that your life will be 100% perfect forever. But for those that don't know that, let's get you on the same page. Let's get you there now. Being a Christian, I'll tell you this, if nobody else has, if no preacher, if your pastor, if anything that you grew up with in church never told you this, I'll tell this to you right now. Being a Christian, it includes good times and bad, blessings and curses, joy and grief, promised lands and wildernesses. In other words, you're going to have good times in your life and bad times. It's that simple. There's no promise for all good times. There's no promise for all bad times. It's both. So don't be surprised when you go through a trial. Let's 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 go a little deeper. I'm going to show you why. Cuz not only does this verse that we chose today, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Not only does that say so, let me give you some more proof from Jesus' life. Let's talk about Jesus. Was Jesus' life free from problems? He is God. If you want to talk about being Christian, He is the, the ultimate, the perfect Christian. Was His life free of problems? Was His life free from trials? Think about this yourself. Now let's look at some ordinary people. Beyond God. Beyond God the Son. Let's look at some normal, ordinary people like you and me. Look at Paul. Try and count how many times he was put in prison. How many times he almost lost his life because he was being physically and violently attacked. Try and count that. Or if you think about people who weren't doing anything grand on the scale of life. Think about Job. Living his normal everyday life, being blessed by God. Job in the Old Testament. And the Bible said that he lived in a way that pleased God. He lived in a way that was God-fearing. And yet, God still allowed him to go through a very difficult season where he lost his entire family and he almost died himself. So I hope that it's clear. I really, 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 really hope that it's clear to all of us that trials are part of life. I'm not telling you that your whole life is going to be messed up and difficult when you become a Christian. But don't be surprised when fiery trials, when the trials of life come your way to test you. So when the trials come, how do we respond? Normally, not to make a joke and not to make light of this, but there's a lot of people that think, why God, why me? Or feel self-pity and then ask God, like, I thought this wouldn't happen to me. Or why don't you get me out of this? Or I didn't do anything to deserve this. That's like a human worldly response. It's like, a, it's like this give and take thing. I put in this much, I should be getting in something different. But I lived such a good life and now I have trials in my life. What's going on, God? That's not actually a proper response. Any of those things I just told you is not a proper response because it's not biblical. In the next verse, in chapter 4, verse 13, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13, the, the response is to rejoice. To rejoice. It says to rejoice. Why? Because Christ also suffered. So we're not just rejoicing because we're going to motivate ourselves to find a way to think about the goodness of God when we're going through some difficult times. But we're doing it because Christ, because Jesus Jesus also went through trials. He also suffered. So if he did, we can rejoice in our trials and our sufferings. That, and the perfect picture I have to describe to you what rejoicing looks like. Because it doesn't really matter what language you break it down into. Some of us, we really need to see what it looks like in practice. So look at Acts chapter 5 verse 41. This is the perfect picture of rejoicing in the middle of a trial. This is when the disciples, they are preaching the word of God. But then the Pharisees do three things. They arrest them, they put them in jail, and then they beat them, 
right? So they're getting arrested, imprisoned, and getting beaten. And then they walk away in verse 41, chapter 5, verse 41 of Acts, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to, to suffer dishonor for the name. So imagine getting arrested, in prison, and shortly after you are getting beat to a pulp, and then you walk away rejoicing. That is a picture. That, that's what I want us to consider. When we consider the trials we go through, consider what other people in the Bible have gone through. We're not the only ones that are going through sufferings. We're not the only ones going through trials. And our response should be rejoicing because Christ also suffered. So when you go through trials, like this whole, this whole sermon is about, don't be surprised. They're going to come. And when they come, find a way to rejoice. So my question for you, my question for you is this. What is one area of your life right now as you watch this sermon where you are currently facing trials? And what does rejoicing look like in this time of your life? What is one area you are currently facing trials and what does rejoicing in that area look like? I hope that this video, this sermon has been helpful for you. And I hope that you've learned that being a Christian has a balance of both good things that happen and some things that are bad. Not necessarily everything is from God, but life happens. Some trials come to test us and refine us, but our response should always be to rejoice because Christ also suffered. Jesus also suffered. So if you're new here and you've watched all the way to the end, thank you very much. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe because I'm not going to force you to. If you feel like it, that's your decision. If you are a returning subscriber and you watch my stuff every week, thank you very much for you guys. There's a small handful of you right now. Thank you. And if you want to consider further supporting my channel monetarily and financially, you can consider contributing to my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, wherever you are watching this. If this has helped you, please, please don't thank me. Thank God.